<laughs> Live from the Dream Hotel. Uh, it's Malik, Rashid, Chief Johnson. Uh -huh. Oh, man. We back. You know what I'm saying? We back. We back. Tapping in once again with y'all. Yeah. Yo, man. What's going on? Just getting to it, man. Back, back, um... Back to doing it, man. Just feeling summer's here. Yeah. Busy. Um, just excited about a lot of things, a lot of things going on. Um, really like sports. So much going on in sports right now. Yo, the, the, the trade that just took place with, uh, what was it, Porzingis? Mm hmm. Uh, what's the key? Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart, Tyus Jones. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be a busy, busy off season. You know, obviously Chris Paul just got, I mean, he just got traded. Uh, what to the to the to the Wizards? They're probably gonna waive him or a buyout or wow. something like that. You know what I mean? And then you've all the names that you're hearing around like the Clippers. You know, because uh, well, actually Brogdon from Boston was supposed to be a Clipper. And that That's through. that 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 fell through. So that lets you know there's gonna it's it's gonna be an interesting off season, a lot of movement, and I think it's gonna change the the dynamic of the league, you know, where certain players end up. But the biggest one thus far, Bradley Bill. Yeah, and Draymond opted out. There's a a lot of free agents, but nobody got bread. Everybody's over luxury taxes and stuff. But yeah, the, the Bradley Bill trade. What do you think? I mean, I love Bradley Bill. Okay. But what are you building over there? You already got two ball dominant, elite scores, and you're adding Bradley Bill, who I feel game is similar to in a books. sense to Booker's. You know what I mean? Um, amazing. I love Bradley Bill. Like, I, I think, I mean, I love Booker and I love KD, but if you watch them in the playoffs, the Achilles Hill was the bench. In the defense. Yeah. So they haven't added anything. They haven't added anything. I, I don't know if they're looking at that as like now they're going to try to move Aiton. Mm -hmm. But you got to address that bench. And um, also, too, like it was just kind of weird. The owner of the Suns, son is the agent of Bradley Bill. <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. No, no. What it is is, just to be correct, the, the agent of Bradley Bill – is the oh son, yeah, no, no. Is the Wizards? Is the Wizards guy? Oh, yeah. Is the Wizards guy because the new guy for the Suns is actually uh, he played at Michigan State under Izzo. Okay, but like yeah, so Bradley Bill's agent, longtime agent Mark Burlstein, or I, I, I hope I'm not butchering your name. Uh, his son is now one of the guys over in one of the hierarchy in the Suns organization. So it's like some insider <laughs> trading. Like, hey, son, why don't you? Ch why don't we inquire if Bradley can be moved? You yeah. know what I mean? Which is some bullshit because I remember, if you remember, a couple years ago when uh, Chris Paul was, Lakers, yeah, right? to the Lakers, and yeah, man. But you know, I I, I, I get it. You know, um, nepotism is working on all levels. Is the ring chasing at an all time high? It's super ring chasing. I I. Like, it just, players of, you know, but also it could be because of, you know, sort of the cloth that we come from where, you know, guys played for the same team at least 10 years or something, nine, eight years or, or a whole career. Like, think about that. Kobe Bryant stayed in the Laker uniform for his whole career. Yeah. Now you got guys that are looked at as like first ballot Hall of Famers or in, or in the argument to be, you know the greatest players of an era are playing for like four and five teams. And we're not talking about at the end of their career when these kind of so things weird. happen. We're talking about like right in the midst of it. Like, you know, bronze played for, you know, Cleveland, Miami, the Lakers, you know what I'm saying? KD's played for what, uh, what are we talking about? Uh, Oklahoma city initially was Seattle and um, has played for the nets and has played for, you know, now playing for Phoenix and play for the Warriors. That's like four teams. That's K that's yeah, KD. KD. I mean, like Shaq. 
Shaq played for. But again, at, towards but the end of his end career, of his career, right? Yeah. But we're not. These guys are in the prime. prime. The prime. I mean, look at Kyrie. He's about to be possibly on his whatever you number know? team. I don't even know what it is with Kyrie. It's, it's hard to keep up, and it's also I think hard as a fan, like a fan base, to build like loyalty. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like. Yeah. Not and I'm still riding my Nuggets wave, but you talk about like a Go franchise. Ahead, right? No, no, no. You listen, earn that. <laughs> forty-seven, forty-six years without winning a title, mm-hmm. but a loyal fan base because, again, it's 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 a metropolitan city, but it's a small market in a sense of like, it's not alluring. Mm-hmm. But again, they took the Warriors, they took the blueprint from San Antonio, which, you know, San Antonio is not a big market. Mm-hmm. But they built through the draft, mm-hmm. good moves, good free agents, and they kind of stayed the course. And now they have a nucleus that can make a run. Mm-hmm. And as a team, I think as a GM, the smart ones are the ones that are like, okay, what pieces can we put in place to where we can at least make a run for like three to four years? We may not win every year, but at least be able to go deep without having to build every year like, oh, so-and-so is leaving. I see Chris Middleton opted out. Yeah. And you're talking about Milwaukee, who is up there kind of every year now. Lopez is a free agent. Um, you know, it's it's like these guys and he, Middleton's already won a chip, you know what I mean? And he's and, and, and to his to his credit though, he's been there like ten or eleven years. Oh yeah, and I love so him. I love dips, his game. I get it. I just wish, you know, again, like I, I just sometimes I feel like the moves that these GMs are making aren't really based on like the nucleus of basketball and like does this fit it's like it's like <laughs> very short when we going after it right now we yeah all and then when it, that, that doesn't work you got to turn around and blow up a team again and you're you know i, I don't know man the, the, the nuggets gm uh calvin booth who was a former nba player yeah. also played at penn state i think this is his first year as the gm um, or a sec, but he's been around the organization, and again, the way he's built. Same thing for, uh, for uh, you know, what is it, um, Phoenix? Like, you know, you. That's that's what I do like to see. You're seeing, especially in basketball, you're seeing a lot of these high hierarchy executives, presidents, of operations, GMs. You know, men of color. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, who are transitioning from the hardwood up into the executive office. Like to see a lot more of that in the NFL. Like to see more ownership. That's the other thing. Michael Jordan sold the team. That boy came off with a lick. Two hundred and seventy-five million when he bought it. Three billion on yeah. the on the. On I the, mean, on it is is never been a a thriving franchise. So business wise, amazing for him. Um, I see um, J Cole's part of the new ownership group. That's Again, dope. passionate about it. I don't know how big his role is going to be, but that's still an amazing thing. And um, I heard he made a call for uh, Caleb Martin. That's how Caleb oh, yeah. Martin came to Miami. Yeah. So, and we know Jay Cole's a huge hoops fan. Played what professionally over in Africa. He's been playing yeah. a couple of years now. Did it so, say? like, I, I love, I love to see that. I love to see that passion. And then it's it's his home team. So. Yeah, Hopefully so. he'll at least, if nothing else, he'll uh, yeah. he'll add some value. It looks like he actually, again, with the think of the Caleb Martin thing, like that was a guy that was playing. You know, he he literally made a call and was like, "Yo, y'all should y'all should take a yeah, look at this some guy." Value to it. So yeah, so hopefully he adds though. some value. Definitely want to try to get out. We'll be in Vegas. Let's try to catch a couple of these summer league games. See some of these new cats. The league is getting so young; it's hard to keep up with, but. You know, it is what it is. There's a lot of talented people, but um, speaking of Vegas, only we only well we about about a month off from from the one. Yeah, man. Uh, and you've been boxing yourself. Yeah. How's that? It's dope. You know what's crazy is my trainer. Shout out Coach Anthony. Um, his favorite fighter is Bud Crawford. He said of all time. Really. And like when you. What is he saying though? He's he, saying he, he thinks. Don't... You know, he's like, I think it's going to be a good fight. But he was just like, I think Bud just has too many tools. You know, he's too composed. He's strong. He's a tech. He's a, he's a technician. Yeah. You know, so hearing that from him, I was like, 
you know, he's going to the fight too. You know, I definitely want to, we got to be up at the fight, but I love, you know, again, both nothing but respect for, for both of those guys. Bud is, is one of my favorite fighters too. Um, you know, I, you just don't know, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I think Bud's going to pull it off, but you wouldn't be surprised. If, I, yeah. If I mean, it. if it went the distance and it went either, you know what, I don't know if any, if there's going to be a knockout, I, you know. I I I feel like I think we talked about this on a previous episode, but as it gets closer, and I'm like watching like on Showtime and other places, they're showing like highlights of past fights, and I feel like the more that I watch, I I do feel like it's going. Look, Bud is historically a slow starter, um, whereas. You know, the dude is more, Earl is high volume punch. Like, he's a pressure guy. He's mm-hmm. a guy that's going to pressure you. Um, I think you call that a swarm. Or, Swarmer. Or you, yeah. yeah. Um, so he's a, he's a pressure guy. And again, styles make fights. But at the same time, I've seen Bud, when he gets hit or he sees blood, he like he, he, he turns on. You know what I mean? And I think that uh, I actually think it's, I, I, I would not be surprised to actually... The closer we get, man, I, I I'm of the thinking that well, I'm gonna take they're it. gonna fight. Yeah, I think that they're gonna fight. I don't think we're gonna see what we saw. Like, I went to Pacquiao Mayweather. I was so disappointed. Like, it was so you know, it was hugely hyped. And then they got in there, and it was like I was watching sparring, or you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was kind of crazy. These guys, like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we could get like a Hagler Hearns. Like, if you've ever seen the old Hagler Hearns footage and it's yeah. like four rounds of hell like yeah I, I want these guys to you know go at it so we'll that's see. what i like about both of them they don't they don't shy away from the fight this is you a know? big fight it's a huge fight and um I, the the fighters i feel like you know the ones that like have the slow start but mm-hmm. also if you can have a slow start but win a couple of the early rounds without mm-hmm. with staying in your mm-hmm. in your pocket as the later goes on and you're able to turn it on, you know, it comes down to stamina, man. Like, and that's one thing I'm learning is like, I, and it gives me so much more, even more respect. It's like the stamina that it takes and the will and the mental. Cause I know when I'm training, as I get tired, the first thing that goes is my mind. <laughs> like I forget like to move or I forget like, Certain, you know certain yeah. things, and so combination. The, yeah, them so out, the so. mental component of it is um, these guys have high level IQ. So I know as fans, sports fans who don't participate professionally, people critique those things. But I have to take a step back on that because these guys, their IQ level and their stamina and like all those things put together, coordination is like. You can't. <laughs> and it, and it's, it, there's a small, uh, small margin for error. Because the moment you know, yeah, like they say, it's the punch that you don't see coming. Yeah. Um, and then like you said, like if you're tired, man, you know how it is. When you tire, you start to let shit go. It's just like Hands pick down. up basketball. You like, man, you know what I mean. You're not dialed in on the play, so it's about yeah. being dialed in. So yeah, I I have a huge respect for the for the sweet science, yo. Um. Music, new music, Killer Mike. That's that's on repeat for me right now. The Andre 3000 verse. Yeah, I mean, just Killer Mike in general. But, like, it's it's one of those albums that I feel like there hasn't been a lot of. It's so well put together and dialed in. And I think there's a craft to picking the, the collaborations that you do. And he did a masterful, the music, the talk, but... Anytime you get Andre, Andre, him, and Future on a song, and the song, all of them get down. Because Andre is, you know, he's upper echelons when it comes to MCs. He don't, maybe people don't throw him in there because he doesn't release bodies of work like that. But this dude, but Mike did his thing on there. Future danced on that joint. Um, You know, but just a great album in general, like, so I'm 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 on that heavy um, Thundercat, you know, 
Tame Impala. I've been in a different kind of pocket. Tame Impala. That's crazy. Okay. Um, you know, just kind of some of those things that allow, because sometimes I feel like you can't breathe when you listen to music, right? In a sense of like, there's too much going on. There's too much to digest. And like hearing those kind of, that kind of music right now for me is allowing me to like kind of be in like a different kind of space mentally. Yo, I mean, that's music is a soundtrack of our lives. It's funny because like every time for me, it's it's almost like reoccurring when we get around summer. Like for me, I'm, man, I, I mean, I, I have a huge palette, you know, eclectic palette. Like I'm listening to Sublime shit. I'm listening to the Chili Peppers. I'm listening to old, you know what I'm saying? I'm listening to old Outkast albums, but just things that like... Or put Sade is my favorite for the summer. Sade is like mm-hmm. a huge for for the summer. Like it's I love Sade, but for the summer it's like she's a vibe. Especially yeah. you know what I'm saying. You living out on the West Coast and up and down PCH, and you know like it's 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 just an extreme vibe. But yeah, to the to the point of Killer Mike. Also, I uh, I was reading. He said he feels like it's a or someone told him it's a rebirth. Like it's a re or a reset. Like, as far as him, like, he feels like now he can get another 10 years out of this thing because he reset. Like, he's on his MC shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, the, the same dude that was, you know, early on on the, you know, won a Grammy for being on an Outkast record. You know what I mean? I think he's back to that. So I, I love I love to hear and see that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. someone, the reinvention or... Just as we get older and we receive information, the way in which we intake it and then we use it for our life and for our for our trajectory. And so I was happy. He said it was an ode to his mother. You know what I'm saying? Who passed Love away? It. I guess. And uh, like, yeah, I'm 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 about to really dive in deep now on the record and listen to it from that standpoint. You know, because yeah. of what he says it means to him. Yeah. Hell yeah. What else is um? What's uh, what what else uh like? I'm sure, you gonna head out to Vegas soon. Yep, headed out there next week. You know, Fourth of July in Vegas is is super dope. Got a lot of family coming out. Um, just enjoy the pool. Uh, <laughs> mainly the pool, the backyard, the pool, the AC. You ain't got to do much. Man. You know what I'm saying? You could throw something on the grill every day, listen to music, and sit so, by the pool, and that's you all. You know me, man. I'm like trying to get everybody to move to Vegas. Like everybody. And if if they stick to it, man, by 2027, they saying the bullet train should be done from LA, from to, LA Vegas. to Vegas, two hours. So you know, get you a slab out there, and you can just. You know, I'm going to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying boom, for boom, real. Boom. That's a real commute. For real, for real. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can sit in, like, you driving here to anywhere, you can sit in traffic for an hour plus. So you might as well. Imagine, like, coming to LA, working, and then you go back to your nice five bedroom crib. That's yeah. cheaper than your apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Real talk. But, real talk. It's beautiful out there too. Yeah, it is. They they've just it. I was uh I don't remember. I think I was either talking to, to Nate or somebody about um I feel like they have like a board that curates. Oh, actually I was talking to my boy Youssef, who just, you know, long time LA dude. Now is living in in um, Vegas, but I feel like they just curate the city. Like there's a board that's just like masterful on the planning and cleaning up and like all those things. And then F one's the end of this year, so they're like repaving the streets and the the you know the freeways, and they just keep the city really clean. And you can actually see where your money's going as a taxpayer. Got it. You know into that, but um. It's dope, man. So yeah, just just kick back with the family, you know, get a little downtime and enjoy the sun, get a little melanin on these pasty legs. Yeah, okay. I'm about to get them start getting more tats though, so I don't even have to worry about that. Uh. <laughs> For real? Wow! Uh. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Nah, so, man, yeah. I'm just I'm 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 excited for the for the remainder of the summer. You know, son uh, graduated, yeah, graduating senior and. His journey now, this this 
this new iteration of his journey is about to begin. I'm I'm super excited for him. Um, Kylie is she'll be in a she'll be in middle school next year, and you know she's playing volleyball at a very elite level. Shout out to Mizuno, all the Mizuno parents and shit. <laughs> um, I'm just excited for her, man. I I love watching these kids grow, man. And the, yeah. and the summer always seems to be a time to also like, or at least that's how I'm utilizing it, um, to really just wrap your arms around them and yeah. spend some real quality time with them because we don't even realize they spend more time in the classroom than they do with us you know nice. on a on a daily basis because yeah. whether it's you know us being in and out of the house like to do what we have to do to provide or it just being us also having to do things for us to keep us going like you doing boxing you know but aria might be asleep or working on a puzzle or gymnastics or whatever you got going on so like the summertime is a time to obviously keep them busy, but to also just make sure you get to wrap your arms around them a little bit more. Because yeah. when, when school comes around, I now it's like, I'd be like, damn, I'm Quit. losing you for a little bit. And yeah. even with, with Aria, like they start, they get out of school like June, it was like this, the 9th or 8th. And then they already go back like in August, in right? August. And I'm like, they don't even. I remember we used to get like September. a full three months off. Yeah, your parents be like, "Yo, go to the boys and girls club all day because uh, you ain't gonna be in this house." Yeah, <laughs> but summers. it's cool, man. They got the steam camp, and then we try to take these little vacations, you know, here and there. We gonna do like a, a family joint to Great Wolf Lodge. Okay. Um, you know, and just just break it up again. You know, you got to keep those little things in there that that um where you're spending quality time together and getting out the house and enjoying yeah. those moments. So yeah. all good. Shout out to parents who are holding it down in the summertime. I still got to work and keep the kids occupied. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a balancing act. And that's what all of this is, is a balancing act, man. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, we're, uh, we should, we should pat ourselves on the back. You know what I mean? Like for real and give ourselves some grace. Cause I think that we both do an excellent job of that, like being providers and, and, and just trying to set the tone and the pace for our kids and family. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's all good. But, uh, yeah, man, we got to get up out of here. It's been good tapping in with y'all. Um, yes, sir. Um, signing so, off. Signing off. You know what I'm saying? Sweet life. Sweet life. Make sure you, uh, you know, continue to, Follow, subscribe, download. We appreciate y'all. And um, yeah, we want to start, you know, interacting a little bit more. So feel free to drop questions, you know, for us. And um, if you have guest suggestions or things you want us to lean in a bit more to, let us know. We appreciate y'all. And we out. Peace. <laughs>